You can use a visual device to inform the reader they're about to embark on a new passage of text in the form of a drop cap. Now they've been around for centuries, drop caps. They can be created quite simply with options from the paragraph panel to enlarge the first letter of your paragraph. Or you could even go to the extent of creating a piece of artwork in the form of a letter to create a bit of visual embellishment. I'm going to take a look at several techniques in this video of how you can achieve that inside of InDesign. The simplest way to create a drop cap is with my text frame selected, I'll switch to the type tool and you will notice that in my paragraph panel, the drop cap options are shown two thirds of the way down. Those are replicated in the control panel at the top of the screen, but you will have to switch to paragraph formatting controls to reveal them. And they're also shown in the properties panel. And from here, well, we've got two options. The first is we can dictate how many lines our cap drops down. So once I tap on two, you'll then see the drop cap appear. And then I'll set that to three lines for the drop cap. You can also dictate how many characters are included in that drop cap. So the default is one and that's pretty much standard, but there are some occasions where you might want to include an entire word if it's applicable. But in my case, I'm going to leave that set to the first character. It will apply the same font formatting as the rest of the paragraph. So this is still set in Minion Pro. If however you wish to alter that, well, if I select the W in the next example and then choose to increase the drop cap lines to the same amount three, in my character panel, I click on the drop down menu, choose a different font, and then I'll hit the escape key on the keyboard. You can also create an inverted drop cap. So your letter would be in white, and then it would be sat against a colored background. I'll start off by creating a paragraph style. So I'll insert my cursor into the block of text, alt and left click to bring up the new paragraph style dialog box, and I'll call this intro. Then I'll head down to drop caps and nested styles. I'll increase the number of lines for the drop cap to be three as before, and then I'll click OK. I'll then select my drop cap character and create a new character style. I'll call this one drop caps and then making sure that apply style selections turned on. I'm just going to click OK and then I'm going to hit the escape key on the keyboard because having that character highlight with the type tool makes it really difficult to see what's going on. So I'll pick up my zoom tool and zoom in nice and close so we can see this clearly on screen. Now I don't have to have the type selected now that it's been applied with that character style. So I can hover over, right click and choose edit drop caps. I'll then head down to underline options and activate it by turning on the checkbox. Now, of course, that looks nothing like a reverse text. So for the weight in here, it's a little bit of experimentation, but if I set this to say 30 points, probably doesn't look big enough. I might have to go up to, let's go 38 for now. I'll then just quickly jump back to character color and I'll set that to paper. Then jump back to underline options and set the color to be something other than the color of my text. So I'll go for red in here and we can see the two. Now, obviously it's in the wrong place. So first of all, I need to go uh, down to offset and then if I just click on the drop down menu and if I choose one, that will activate the up and down arrows and I can then just tap on those. And if I set that to a negative value until I center that red block behind our text, I can work on the weight value as well then just to shrink that down in size. And you'll notice that the other characters that follow the drop cap are really close to the edge of our red background now. So if I go back to basic character formats, I can go to my tracking value and say, apply a positive, say 10 in there, which isn't enough. But if I keep clicking in here, then I can increase that space. So that's the best way to achieve that space after your drop cap. From here, I'll go down to the bottom and click OK. And as odd as it sounds, I'll then select that character and I'll set the character style to be none. I'll hit the escape key on the keyboard and then I'll go back to my intro paragraph style. Right click and choose edit intro. I'll head back to drop caps and nested styles under where it reads non for character style. I can pick the one that we've just created and combine the two together. Character style combined into the paragraph style. Now you might notice that the uh, edge of the red box protrudes from the side of the text frame. And we can remedy that just by turning off a line left edge. And then when I'm done, 
go down to the bottom and click OK. If you prefer a little bit more control over the position of your drop cap, then if I pick up my type tool, we can actually just do this without using the drop cap feature, to be perfectly honest. If I type in capital W, double click to select that, and I'll set this to, let's go for 30, try 32 in there, hit the escape key on the keyboard, and then if I right click on my text frame, I can choose text frame options. And then I'm going to choose to make this center justified. So it's always in the middle of my text frame, vertically speaking, click OK. And then if I set the alignment to center aligned, I can go and change the color of my background to red as before. Click on type formatting and change that to paper for white. Press return. And then if I just scale this down in size, so it does in terms of the, the whole block cover three lines as we've been attempting to create a drop cap of three lines. And then I can go to window and choose text wrap. Just pull that out from its current home. And then I can choose to apply wrap around bounding box. And then when I drag this across like so, I will just need to make sure I remove the W that's already in that text frame, hit the escape key, click back on my new text frame in there. I can reposition that and then I can use the offset options. So I can push that out to the side and then from here, well, I probably need to make that a little bit bigger just to fill out that space like so, and then possibly pull that out to the side as well, just to center my W in a, Kind of a nice square shape. Now, to be perfectly honest, I could always go up to the top up here and I could change that to say 13.5, press return, unlink it and set the other dimension to 13.5. So it is perfectly square and then just nudge it down. And then I can set the bottom offset to be a negative value just to pull that text into the line in there. So you can do that with text wrap as well, if you wish. And that will give you more control of the size of the block in the background and the position of the other text that flows around that drop cap in there. You can use a very similar technique for a drop cap using a placed piece of artwork. If I turn on the wraparound bounding box, I can drag that into position down here and then just use my offset just to push that to the side and just nudge that down a little bit like so. And you get the same effect. So as you can see, there are numerous ways that you can incorporate a drop capital letter into your copy and inform the reader that there is a new passage of text and add a little bit of visual embellishment to your page layout as well.